Thank you. Good afternoon. I was asked to um, talk about Ukraine and our honored guest uh, for eight minutes. And uh, it's a difficult assignment. Uh, as you know, I used to be a chess player, and uh, being a chess player, I used talking in hours. But uh, as for Ukraine and Russian war in Ukraine, I have been talking not for eight minutes, not for eight hours, but for eight long years. So there's so much I want to say, uh, but I'll have to be short to um, keep the program uh, intact. Um, thanks to courageous Ukrainian people and leaders, the war in Ukraine is not just a battlefield of Ukrainian defenders and Russian invaders. It's a, it's a front line of the eternal war between freedom and tyranny. And um, Ukraine is defending this front line. It has become a symbol, symbol of resistance, symbol of the ability of the weak to stand up to the strong. And not just to stand up, but to fight back and win. Ukraine has also exposed the myth of strength by her spirit. NATO, the United States, Europe, they have money, they have weapons, but they lost the spirit, this fighting spirit. And Ukraine is reminding us what this spirit is through sacrifice through example. We heard over years so many calls for negotiation, for uh, peace, for uh, um, finding common ground. Time and again, making concessions, looking for compromises, and calling it peace. But since the annexation of Crimea in 2014, there was no peace in Ukraine. But occupation, ethnic cleansing, war crimes. NATO can and, and, and is giving weapons to Ukraine to fight, to fight. NATO is also helping Ukrainians to learn how, how to fight with these weapons. But it's Ukrainians who are reminding us why we have to fight. To defend freedom, independence, to defend all the values of the free world that all of us here prize so much. And the best illustration of this willingness to fight and to make sacrifices for the freedom and independence was demonstrated in very early days of the new Putin invasion of Ukraine back in, in February. Having no faith in ability of Ukrainian nation to defend their country and their capital, United States and European powers graciously offered Mr. Zelensky and his government an escape route. They, they, had, they were full of good intentions. What they heard back was, un, in, in, no, have no doubts, was equal to the great statements made by Winston Churchill back in 1940, when Britain alone stood against Nazis. I do not need the right, I need ammunition. What a strange time where so many politicians turn to be clowns and a comedian has become a hero. <laughs> and this message, I don't need the right, I don't want to escape, I need bullets, I need ammunition. 
This is message that is heard from every freedom fighter, every dissident. It's a plea to reach democracies that always promise a lot and so often fell short on delivery. Now, of course, we're not always asking for actual bullets, but for any kind of support. Rhetorical, financial, political. I don't know about you, but every morning I wake up, look at the computer screen, and I hold my breath reading news from the front line. The last few weeks, the news are great. We see Ukrainian army, heroic army, is destroying Putin's military armada and taking back their land. We believe that this war will be over, no matter what people say. Oh, by the way, have you seen what Elon Musk said today? Have you read his Twitter? I responded. <laughs> I suggested that he would delete this shameful tweet and say he was high when he published it. <laughs> this war will be over when the Ukrainian flag will be raised in Sevastopol. And it's not only for Ukrainians, it's for all of us. Because the, the winds of freedom, they blow around the world. I have no doubt this fresh wind energizes Iranian protesters, mostly women, of course, standing on the streets and trying to take the country back from the hands of the mullahs. This wind also reminds all of us who live and those who were born and raised in free countries not to take democracy and liberty for granted. But those heroes on the front line, they're not only men in Ukraine. You have women who are fighting alongside with their men, but also, also promoting the cause in Ukraine and around the world. I am proud today to introduce one who is a not newcomer in the fight. As the founder of the Center for Civil Liberties in Ukraine, Oleksandr Matvichuk has become one of the most prominent defenders of human rights. She received uh, an award uh, Defender of Democracy uh, from Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe back in 2016. And in 2017, an award from U.S. Embassy, Ukrainian Women of Courage. Now, she is very active, rallying support for Ukraine and raising awareness about war crimes and genocide committed by Russian troops in Ukraine. Now, uh, my eight minutes or whatever, just coming to an end, which is for the best. Because for too long, too many people wanted to speak for Ukrainians when all they want is to speak for themselves. So please listen, Alexander Matvichuk.